Our entire world is moving towards using renewable sources of energy, like solar and wind. But unlike the more traditional energy sources, such as coal and petroleum, we cannot control the amount of energy generated at will. We cannot make the sun shine brighter on a cloudy day, nor can we make the winds blow stronger when we want them to. This makes it very important for us to be able to save this energy when it is abundantly available, so we can use it during the peak hours when it is most needed. Some of the top minds in this world have been working lately on this problem, and one of the revolutionary solutions put forth is the gravity battery, which has the potential to change the way we use renewable energy. So what is this so-called gravity battery? How does it work? And how could it change our lives and the way we use energy? According to some energy experts, developing bigger lithium-ion batteries will be necessary for a future that is cleaner. Others contend that the world's best chance is green hydrogen. Then there are those who prefer gravity to chemistry, because gravity is an unstoppable force that surrounds us all. Additionally, unlike lithium-ion batteries, gravity batteries' storage capacity doesn't degrade over time, which is another way in which they outperform the competition. Gravity battery storage capacity should be able to withstand the test of time and need little or no maintenance. This new area of energy storage technology is, in theory, extremely straightforward, since it is based on Newton's unchangeable logic. What goes up must come down. Use green energy when it's available to lift a massive weight to a certain height. Release the load when there are no more renewable energy sources available by using gravity to drive a generator. More than 90% of the world's existing high-capacity energy storage is achieved via a similar technique called pumped hydro. Use excess energy to channel water upward, then, when necessary, divert it down via hydroelectric turbines. It is an established procedure, but there are serious problems with scalability. Hydroelectric projects need precise geographical conditions, including arid terrain and an abundance of water, and they are large, costly endeavors with prohibitive capital expenditures. An energy storage device that can be installed practically anywhere and on a large scale is required for the globe to achieve net zero temperatures. This is being pursued by the green engineering startup Gravitricity, located in Edinburgh. The team successfully tested its first gravity battery prototype in April of last year using a 15-meter, 49-foot steel tower holding a 50-ton iron weight. Electric motors lifted the large metal box inch by inch into the air before lowering it gently to the earth, using the downward drag to drive a number of electric generators. Although the demonstration installation was small-scale, it nonetheless generated 250 kilowatts of instantaneous electricity, which could momentarily power around 750 houses. What the scientists discovered about the possible lifetime of their technology was equally promising. It was demonstrated that we can regulate the system to increase the lifespan of certain mechanical components, such as the lifting cable. Additionally, the system is built such that individual parts may be readily changed rather than having to replace the whole thing at some point in its lifespan. So there is definitely room for a lengthy operational life. The Gravitricity prototype aimed upwards, but the business is currently concentrating underground. The last year has seen engineers scouting for abandoned coal mines in Chile, South Africa, Eastern Europe and Britain. Why construct buildings when we can harness the geology of the soil to support our weight? It seems a simple answer. Disused mine shafts that are deep enough to accommodate a full-size gravitricity installation that will extend down at least 300 meters and potentially much deeper are scattered around the world. The idea of a new low-carbon economy that guarantees the lives of fossil fuel workers and their communities is known as a just transition. And Blair claims that there is political will to make it happen as well. Thus, by 2024, an underground prototype, possibly situated in the Czech Republic, should be operational with sufficient financing. But first, a number of obstacles must be surmounted. The shaft liner and the area around the shaft need to be carefully examined to ensure that they are totally sound and able to support several thousand tons, according to Blair. Methane gas and flooding in the mines are further possible safety concerns. In light of this, Gravitricity is also considering digging its own custom-built shafts, a project that will initially cost more but ultimately guarantee far more consistency. However, not every inventor recognizes the advantages of a below-the-surface solution. The eye-catching steel and concrete prototype from Energy Vault, another pioneer in the field of gravity batteries, is more than 20 stories tall and is located in a valley in southern Switzerland. A pair of 30-ton blocks are raised by an AI-controlled crane when there is more green electricity available than is needed, 
Back down they go, producing electricity for thousands of homes when demand exceeds supply. Energy Vault is prepared to begin a commercial deployment since its technology has been tried and proven and has garnered around $402 million, 325 million pounds in financing. The business has created an EVX modular structure that houses thousands of weights on a trolley system and is a bit more visually appealing than the angular Swiss version. Imagine it as a warehouse full of energy elevators. When clean electricity comes in, the recycled material blocks rise and when the system needs more power, they descend. A 100 megawatt EVX has the ability to power around 250,000 houses for a day. The entire storage capacity of each site will depend on its size and architecture, but even at the low end, the structures would occupy dozens of acres. Could there be an issue here? No, since the systems are most likely located far from metropolitan centers next to wind and solar farms. We won't have to dig any particularly deep holes or deal with any other significant site-specific constraints. Anywhere that can accommodate a 20-story skyscraper may be used. Energy Vault's order book is quickly filling up, and inquirers are pouring in from all over the world, including Asia, the Middle East, Australia and China. This indicates that the word is getting through. The latter is especially interesting, according to Picconi, who is optimistic that it may portend a shift in strategy for the country that now emits the most greenhouse emissions. Although it may be wishful thinking, eventually all nations will have to adopt some kind of green energy storage. This includes long-term energy storage, which allows you to keep the lights on for a long time when renewable energy production is low and quick electrical spikes as needed by the system. This second argument pertains to a significant issue that green energy providers must deal with. Electrical networks were designed to support conventional power plants rather than renewable energy sources. The grid must always be balanced and operators must continually balance supply and demand. However, this may be challenging when using intermittent energy sources like wind or solar, which might experience rapid changes in output. A tremendous amount of torque is produced by the sheer weight and gradual descent of a gravity battery, which enables the device to deliver its full power nearly instantly. Due to its ability to smooth out second-by-second -second variations, the technology is especially good at preserving grid balance which lowers the possibility of major infrastructure damage and blackouts. The amazing news is that gravity batteries are exactly what we need right now. They operate with current technology and cost nothing to develop and maintain. Let's stop turning off solar power plants and wind turbines because we can't consume or store the energy when it's created. Once we do that, we will no longer require the polluting power plants we presently use to handle peak demands, creating a cooler and greener planet. And who doesn't want to be cool? Hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you in the next one.